Skype in, access episode 69. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is our game of the week. We've got all the latest news in PlayStation Briefing. Catch all the latest digital goodies in On The Store. We crash the UK premiere of A Good Day To Die Hard and get our hands on The Last of Us in Access All Areas before signing out with some mushy Valentine's madness. All right, Biden, it's been long enough. We'll forgive you for crashing the Metal Gear Solid 2 party and for doing naked cartwheels and for slipping on pigeon poo. Why do we forgive him? Because this time he's got a bloody massive sword and he's out for a vengeance. Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, we should say, the latest title from Hack and Slash Masters Platinum Games that takes the traditional Metal Gear formula of stealthing through the shadows and slices it into a thousand precisely measured pieces. Rising is all about outrageously flamboyant action, something made apparent right from the start when Raiden makes an entrance that trumps anything Snake has done in 26 years of video game badassery. Yes, when Sons of Liberty leaps off a bridge and does a Terminator thing with the lightning, but Raiden Raiden gets shot out a stealth jet like a brilliant blonde rocket of robot justice before doing that glinty eye thing at the camera. Yes, get in there, Raiden. Bottom line, Raiden is bloody cool in this one and controlling him as he dices enemy cyborgs into bite-sized chunks. I wrote bite with a Y on the script there. Feels smooth, fast and utterly electric. The combat system is helped by the much-hyped blade mode, which sends the game into a stream of slow-mo and lets you rotate a transparent plane before making your killing stroke with surgical precision. Basically, the rule of Metal Gear Rising is, if it's a thing, you can cut it in half, or quarters, or 164 fourths, if, like me, you start getting a little bit too into it. <laughs> yes! Cut, 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 it cut. Then there are the boss fights, which in true Metal Gear fashion are extravagant, flashy and fought against some right old characters. Characters like Samuel Rodriguez, who does a smile like he's sort of apologising for farting but isn't half bad with a sword, and Sundowner, who's the fat one, Monsoon, who's the creepy one, and Mistral, who's the woman one. Oh, and then there's a dog as well. I am I am prototype LQ84I. Well, I'm going to call you Clive. I possess an intellect far beyond human reckoning. Shut up, Clive. You even get to play with the boss's weapons after you've beaten them, which is great because it lets Raiden do that thing Neo does in The Matrix 2 where it... Yeah, that thing. Good job, because it allowed me to overlook this frankly absurd mariachi disguise, which sort of reminds me of the time when Dave tried to skip work by putting on a fake moustache and pretending he was an Italian IT worker called Davos Jacksonini. But we'll let that slide because Metal Gear Rising Revengeance is a game drenched in so much cool it's a wonder it doesn't drown in the stuff. It's out on February the 22nd and we recommend it like being really, really careful with your knives in the kitchen. Time to crack that news whip. It's your PlayStation briefing. What's that? Is it? It can't be. But it is! Skyrim DLC on the PS3. After 15 long months of shouting FUS ROLL DAR at innocent rabbits, we've now got three extra slabs of Elder Scrolls goodness to chew on all at once. Dawnguard is a sexy side quest of vampire slaying, Hearthfire lets you design your own lodgings like a beardy Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen, and Dragonborn sees you exploring a brand new chunk of country called Solstheim. All three extension packs hit PS3 this month and come with a 50% price cut on their week of release. Moving away from dragons and towards New York invading aliens is out next week's sci-fi shooter Crisis 3. We spoke to Crytek CEO Chervat Yearly and Creative Director Rasmus Hoyingar about how the nano suit is even more badass than before. We are making it faster to access, simpler to access. Crisis 3 is a much more sandbox driven game as opposed to Crisis 2, so it, it's more expansive. And hence, a more streamlined uh, nano suit makes for a much more rich experience. At the same time, the nano suit can do new things, like as the hacking. There are also indirect changes to the nano suit, like the fact that you can fire Sith weapons, the fact that you can fire bow, regular bow arrows, and stay cloaked is driven by the nano suit. That's your lot for briefing this week. We'll have more news for you next time. If you're not
not yet signed up to PlayStation Plus, here's a little incentive courtesy of the Instant Game Collection, an ever-present catalogue of ace PS3 titles available for download at no extra cost to your Plus membership. February's highlights include Sleeping Dogs, a face-crackingly brilliant adventure set in a sprawling open-world Hong Kong. As undercover cop Wei Shen, you get to dole out painful justice to the city's web of organised crime, justice that includes death by ventilator fan, or just ride around the place on a motorbike wearing a really cool leather jacket. Either way, it's amazing and you should download it now. If you prefer being punched in the cerebrals by multidimensional puzzlers, then good for you. Quantum Conundrum is also in the Instant Game Collection and is also brilliant. This portal-alike has you zapping the world from heavy to light and back again in order to progress through a labyrinthine mansion and free your uncle from his self-imposed science prison. And don't forget the Instant Game Collection is on PS Vita too, and this month you can bag yourself Mega Sexy Future Racer Wipeout 2048 at no extra cost. The game is beautifully tailored to PS Vita's tilt and touch features and has the coolest menu since that one Tom Cruise has in Minority Report. Except Wipeouts is better because it then lets you pilot anti-gravity cars. That's it from the store for now, we'll hit you with more downloads next week. Hello from the red carpet in London's Leicester Square for a very special bonus level. Namely, one where we take community presenter Matt Downton, like the Abbey, to the UK premiere of A Good Day to Die Hard. Look how excited he is. We then gave Matt our microphone and told him to poke it at celebrities while we went for a nice warm coffee. All yours, Matt. It's not cold or wet. No, not at all. What was your first thoughts when you found you were going to helm the new Die Hard? <laughs> no, I was uh, excited for about three seconds and then nervous for the next 16 months. <laughs> what would you get John for Father's Day? What would I get him for Father's Day? Uh, geez, I don't know. That's a very good question. i got to think about that one, man. Now, what was it like working with Bruce Willis? Uh, that guy, yeah. Uh, he's fun, you know. He's actually a lot funnier. He does this whole... Why do the bad guys never win? I want them to win. Because it's die hard, you know. He has to survive. <laughs> well, all the stars have gone in now to uh, to watch the premiere. Bruce Willis, um, he didn't turn up because if he did, he would have talked to me. I'm Matt Downton, PlayStation Access. Well done, Matt, and a big thanks to all the stars. A Good Day to Die Hard, which is about John McClane and son doing banter in between shooting bad men, is in UK cinemas on February the 14th. The perfect Valentine's Day treat. a bigger game than The Last of Us coming to PS3 this year, then stove my head in with a brick. Yes, like that. We can afford to be confident having made the journey to California last week to play the game for the very first time, giving us a new appreciation of just how tense, brutal and awesome it is. Topics we covered with the guys from Naughty Dog. So building tension is important for us on a number of different levels. For story purposes, we want to apply that tension onto the humans to see how they react. We want to apply that same tension onto the player and some of that tension building, I mean, from audio design to the mechanics that you have, like simple designer tricks, like how long does it take to enter and exit my backpack? How quickly can I craft? How quickly can I fire a gun? And then you kind of try to pair these things with like, what states are the infected in? They know you're there, they start frenzying, they go wild, they just start twitching, like just agitated, like a buzzsaw just cranked up and you're just like, oh no. I stirred the hornet's nest. Sound has always been really important in the Naughty Dog games. I think people are surprised by how much information they're getting through sound. But now you have a world where you have enemies that are really affected by sound. When you hear that enemy, you're scared. And then also to have this enemy, which the people in this time now call clickers, because they can't see, they're totally blind but they can track you with echolocation. So they're using sound to find you. So now it is integral to the gameplay. The story and the characters are starting to come alive and we're starting to really find their voices and the performances of the actors are amazing. And then the FX department is doing stunning work and it's all those things together that's just making a really fun experience. Thanks to Bruce and Ricky. You can see extended versions of these interviews online and we'll have more on The Last of Us very soon. Before we go,
go, we've just got time for one last dabble in the pool of PlayStation love. Turns out that PS3, a place we thought of as full of hard people, is actually made up of loved up sops who send each other cards like this. Dear Sackboy, your hessian face enchants me, your smile like a flower in bloom. I want to strap you to my love rocket and take you to the moon. Lovely. Dearest Agent 47, My heart used to beat only with fury. My anger is assured as the tides. Then I saw your gorgeous bald head, so shiny, even at the back and sides. Can we be bald together, please? From the God of War. Sully's Tash, you're really flash. Will you be my valentine? Your bristles are divine. P.S. Shave it off, you old stoat. Love from Nate. Happy Valentine's Day and we'll see you next week. That's all for Access this week. Hit the giant red button to subscribe to all our regular episodes and extra features. And if you enjoyed this week's show, don't forget to comment and like us. Like us! <laughs>